Well, we're here hosting a uh, launch party and sneak peek at the first four episodes of Harper's Globe, which is the show that we were um, executive producing. And it is the online companion series to the new CBS TV show, Harper's Island. And our background is we started out um, executive producing Lonely Girl 15, so the big internet show from that started in 2006 and ran through 2008. Um, and then we created and executive produced Kate Modern, so that was a spin-off of Lonely Girl 15 in, uh, that took place in the UK. Um, and actually one of the actresses on Kate Modern is nominated for a streamy for Best Actress in a Drama, which we are insanely proud of, her name is Tara Rushton. And now we run a company and continue producing uh, cool online shows. I think that we're a little unusual in that we don't have a traditional TV and film background. Um, I'm actually a doctor. I was a neuroscience major in college, and I went to medical school at UC San Diego. Um, I was actually a surgery resident. I was training to be a plastic surgeon. Greg was an entertainment lawyer. Um, and I, but I, on the side, I was a, a writer. I had created a couple short films during medical school and uh, quit medicine because I didn't like it, moved back to LA and started producing videos online. And really the inspiration for Lonely Girl came from, uh, I saw the Lazy Sunday Chronicles of Narnia video on YouTube, started going to YouTube every day watching videos and just thought that that format of this uh, video blog, uh, literally just watching real kids and you know, other people video blogging, something was really compelling about that. And I thought it would be cool if you could tell a story using that person as a character. You know, we didn't, no negative media. I mean, I think that f from, a, from a user standpoint, some of the really, really first fans of Lonely Girl 15 who felt that she was their friend, there was a connection, were, were disappointed. Um, and, you know, they might have made a few videos or comments. But for the most part, what happened was um, the media was really impressed by it and excited because it was the first time that online video transcended beyond either stolen clips, you know, from Saturday Night Live or like Lazy Sunday, or random people making a single video of their cat meowing or their baby running around, and you'd have one video that got 10 million views. We were the first people to ever make content that was serialized that you'd come back for every day and get, you know, a story. So the media took that side and really ran with that, saying um, there is an audience out there. If you can make good, compelling content, people watch it all the time. And then what happened from the user's side is that people read about the show, learned about it, saying this is a fictional, cool, interactive online show. I'm going to watch it. And our view numbers actually like skyrocketed after publicly coming out that it was a fictional show, which, which then allowed us to say, OK, we have a business here. We can produce new shows um, that are fictional from day one, but really cool. I would say that the connection that you can get as a viewer between you and the character uh, and then you and the storyline, but in particular that interaction with the character is very, very uh, unlike uh, TV and film. It's probably more similar to uh, novels where there's a lot more time to really get into a character. And it's actually even more than that because you can literally send messages to these characters and they will talk back to you. So I think that's really cool. It's very, very compelling. And um, you know, for us personally, over the past couple of years of producing Lonely Girl, Kate Modern, now um, Harper's Globe, it's really been about um, figuring out how to use that new medium in a way where you can still preserve traditional elements of storytelling that are really important, like you know, foreshadowing or cliffhangers or whatever, but also take advantage of that interactivity. So Harper's Island's a 13-episode TV event, they're calling it, that's on CBS, and it's Thursdays at 10 o'clock after Survivor and CSI. I've done this before. Nice plug. Uh, a nice plug. And so um, the concept for Harper's Island is there's a wedding party of about 25 people who go to an island off the coast of Seattle. And you get there and you learn early on that something bad happened on this island several years ago. A, a serial killer went and killed a bunch of people. And as the show starts unfolding, people start dying on the island. And so every episode, people get killed one by one. And at the end of the entire season, you will find out who the killers are, who the survivors are, and it's a full closed story arc. And when there's a season two, it will be a new story in a new location with new characters. So Harper's Globe is the online companion piece, which is um, Harper's Globe is a local island newspaper. And it is run by a girl named Robin, who just moved to the island to digitize old footage, make videos, and get people excited about the island, interested in the newspaper. And as a fan, if you watch the online story, you'll learn more depth about the characters, some earlier information about the island than you'd find from the TV show. And then as the two shows start running simultaneously, Robin is sometime in the TV show, TV characters are sometimes in, in the online Harper's Globe story, and it becomes one big, exciting event um, online and on TV.
No, they're very connected. Um, we were very fortunate because from the from the beginning, we uh, started working with uh, John Turtletaub and uh, Dan Schatz and Kareem, uh, who are all the producers of the TV show, uh, before they even had a pilot written. Um, and then they hired their head writer, Jeff Bell. And so from the very beginning, uh, we had already pitched them this idea of this you know, character Robin and the, the online newspaper um, before they had even started writing. And so as they wrote their TV show, they were able to incorporate you know, the concepts and ideas behind the online show. And then on an ongoing basis, um, our writer on Harper's Globe, um, Jennifer Yale, it works on the TV show with uh, Jeff Bell, their head writer. She was in on all of their writing meetings. And so it really was a very, very close collaboration between us, between our executive producer, Matt Siegel, and their entire team. And so as a result, there really is this intertwined story between the two. Yeah, the, the good thing is you usually get it where there's a TV show, there's writers and producers, they write everything, they shoot everything, it's in the can, and then if there is a digital component, it's handed to like the digital group in the basement at one of these networks who, you know, kind of the redhead stepchild, and they say, go build a website or make something cool. But for us, the, the paths of, of creativity or creating the content were simultaneous from the TV and the online so that we can add stuff into theirs and they could add stuff into ours at a point, you know, past, you know, the point of no return, which is when it's already done and shot. The creative team, I mean, the, the guys who do Harper's Island, they did Jericho. And so better than anyone in the TV space, they saw the power of the internet. They saw, you know, fans signing up for message boards and sending, you know, millions of pounds of peanuts to Les Moonves saying, put our show back on the air. Um, so when they were developing Harper's Island, they were passionate about the internet. They wanted something, but they didn't really know how to do it. And um, you know, it was it was complex. And so when we went and met CBS, and then we saw Harper's Island, and what a cool show, the little sizzle reel. We were like, let's work with these guys. They saw us and said, let's work with these guys. And that was cool. It was cool. Yeah, it worked out. Uh, this is Cape Modern. So Tara, Tara was uh, one of the stars at Cape Modern, which was the show that we produced in England. She played a character named Charlie on that show. And so she's nominated for a streaming, so she's going to come to LA for the award show. Uh, Kate Modern, so Lonely Girl 15, the, the mythology of Lonely Girl 15 was that there is this evil secret society that's looking for girls around the world that have a special blood trait. Their blood can extend your life if you transfuse it in your body. It became and very sci-fi. It became, yeah, like Buffy sci-fi-ish. And so um, we took that initial, like that creative concept of this mythology, and we did a spin-off show in London called Kate Modern. So new characters, new storyline, but with that mythology of evil secret society after girls with a blood trait. And we've actually even produced a show in Poland called Nicola. Um, that is Polish characters, Polish storyline, but in the Same LG mythology. 15 universe. People in black suits. And yeah, it's, doing yeah well. it's really popular. Uh -huh. it's, it's pretty fun. I mean, it's written by Polish writers. It's produced by Polish producers with Polish actors. And um, people seem to dig it. So it's a cool story, and it's, it's fun to get into. It's interactive. And so Tara was the star of Kate Modern. And... Um, She's, she's coming out here for the streamies, hopefully to win her award.